Belling the Cat. Kitty the cat is eating all the mice. The mice are afraid to come out of their mouse holes. Meow. I got you, little mouse. Oh, please, kitty. Let me go. I am too small to eat. I don't mind. I am very hungry right now. <coughs> Kitty the cat eats poor little Joe and looks around for another mouse. That was delicious, but I'm still not full. I need another one. Meow. Lenny and Theodore are also mice. They see everything. Did you see that, Theodore? I sure did, Lenny. It was terrible. Kitty is getting fatter and fatter every day. She is eating more and more. Soon she will eat all of us. We need to do something. You're right. But what can we do? Let's have a meeting first. Tell all the mice to come to my house tonight. Don't worry, I'll tell everyone to come. We'll all be there. Just then, Kitty smells the two mice and slowly walks towards them. Quickly, Lenny, hide! Kitty is coming this way. Meow. I smell mice. Where are they? This time, the two mice are lucky. They get away from Kitty. Late in the evening, all the mice are gathered at Theodore's house for the meeting. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming. What's up, Theo? Why did you call us so late? Well, Mr. Toby, today Kitty got Little Joe. Not again. Are you sure? Yes, Theodore and I saw it together. It was really terrible. We must stop this now. If we don't, we'll all be eaten too. I agree with you, but what can we do? We are so small and helpless. That's why we are here. Together, let's think of a way. Let's trap Kitty. But dear, Kitty is much bigger than us. How can we trap her? I don't know, dear. The mice keep thinking, but they don't come up with any good ideas. Come on, everyone, think harder. Well, uh, how about just staying away from Kitty? What do you mean, Buster? It's simple. Just stay inside our mouse holes and don't come out. Then what do we eat, Buster? We have to go out for food, or else we'll starve to death. My my, that's just as terrible. I don't want to starve. How about just running away? When we see Kitty coming, just run. Not a bad idea, dear. But what happens when we don't see Kitty coming? I didn't think of that. Finally, Felix, the brightest mouse at the meeting, raises his hand. What is it, Felix? Speak up. Well, uh, how about hanging a bell around Kitty's neck? When we hear the bell, we can run away. That's it. Why didn't I think of that? You are a genius. Hooray for Felix! Good job. 
Now we are all saved. Let's celebrate. Wait a minute. What's wrong, Grandpa Willie? The idea is wonderful. I agree. But I have just one question. What's that, Grandpa Willie? Who is going to hang the bell around Kitty? The whole room suddenly becomes silent. After a while, Mr. Toby opens his mouth. Well, uh, I would like to, but I am too old. So how about you, Buster? You are young and strong. No, thank you. I am not that strong. Lenny would be better. He is slim and fast. I am not that fast. How about you, Felix? You are smart. And it was your idea. What? Me? No, thanks. I don't want to be eaten. We better think of another plan. Moral. A good plan is of no use if it is not carried out. The cat. The lion in love. A farmer lives alone with his daughter. She is very beautiful and also very thoughtful. The farmer loves his daughter very much. Right now, they are working in the field together. Don't work too hard, my dear. It's very hot today. You might get sick. Don't worry about me, father. Why don't you go back home? I can do this by myself. No, no. Let's finish it together quickly. A lion comes down to the village from the forest. Look at those two. Yum, yum. They look very delicious. It's my lunchtime. I shall eat them for lunch. <laughs> The lion goes to the field. Roar! Roar! I am the king of the forest. You two must be my lunch today. Get ready to die. Oh my goodness! A lion! Where did it come from? Run away, my dear! No, father! I can't leave you here alone. I will stay with you. You are a brave young girl. Come closer to me. Let me look at you. The lion takes a close look at the farmer's daughter. She is so beautiful. He falls in love at first sight. You are not only brave, but also very beautiful, my dear. You are the most beautiful girl in the world. Will you marry me? Marry you? What do you mean? She can't marry you.
Why not? I am the king of the forest. Well, uh, she is too young to get married. That doesn't matter. She will grow old with me. Give your daughter to me, or else you will both die. What will you do? I must ask my daughter first. Please come back tomorrow. I will answer you then. The farmer and his daughter return home. What shall we do, my dear? I can't let you marry the lion. But if you don't marry him, he will eat us up. Don't worry too much, father. There must be a way. I'll think of something. Aha! I've got it! The daughter whispers something into her father's ears. What a great idea! You are not only beautiful, but very smart, too. The next day, the farmer meets the lion. So, what did your daughter say? Tell me at once. She said she will marry you, but... What is it? Tell me! What else did she say? She said she likes you very much, but she said she is afraid of your claws. What if you harm her by mistake? So I was thinking, can you pull out your claws for her? Why, yes! I can do anything for her. Come back tomorrow. The lion goes back to his cave and pulls out all his claws. He is so happy. He can't wait to marry the farmer's daughter. Hello there, lion. Did you pull out all your claws? I pulled all of them out. Look for yourself. They are all gone. Now, tell her to come to me. But wait. There is one more thing. She said she is also afraid of your teeth. They are too sharp. What if you harm her with them? So I was thinking, can you pull out all your teeth as well? That is not a problem. I can do anything for her. I will pull out all of my teeth. Come back tomorrow with your daughter. I shall tell her. See you tomorrow, lion. This time, the lion goes back to his cave and pulls out all of his teeth. He looks into the mirror and smiles. He is excited about tomorrow's wedding. Good morning, farmer. I pulled out all of my teeth. Look for yourself. Now I have no sharp claws and no sharp teeth. I did everything as your daughter asked. I can't harm her anymore. Where is she now? Where is my bride? Bring her to me. I want to marry her right now. She is not coming here today. And she is not marrying you either. What? What do you mean? I pulled out my claws and teeth for her. She said... Lion, you are so naive. You have no claws nor teeth. I am not afraid of you anymore. I won't give my daughter to you. Take this! Ouch! And that! Ouch! Ouch! Hey, what are you doing? That hurts! Go away before I really hit you. Go, I say, go! What have I done? <laughs> Moral. Wisdom can save you from all kinds of trouble.
the fashionable crow. Today, God is going to pick the prettiest bird among all the birds. All of the birds gathered around to talk about the party. They are all very excited. There will be a big party at the palace tonight. All birds are invited. God will pick the prettiest bird. This will be so exciting. I wonder who will be picked. Who knows? It can be any bird. I know it will be me. I will be picked for sure. My tail is the prettiest. Your tail may be pretty, but I am more graceful. But wait, my beak is the longest. Let's not fight. We have to get ready for the party. You're right. We don't have much time. Let's take a bath in the pond. That's a great idea. The sparrow, the duck, the peacock, the swan, and the crane are going to the pond. On their way, they meet the crow. Where are you going? We are going to the pond to take a bath. There is a big party at the palace tonight. God is going to pick the prettiest bird. I will be picked for sure. Really? All of the birds are invited, didn't you know? No one told me. God is picking the prettiest bird. You have no chance, so why don't you just stay home? I don't want to stay home. I want to go to the party. Look at yourself. You are too ugly. You are too black. You are too dirty. But I still want to go. I'm going to jump into the pond first. I'm going to take a bath. No, no, wait! You can't bathe before us. Why not? I should also bathe for the party. You are too dirty. You will make the water dirty. Please, bathe after us. I don't want to get dirty because of you. <laughs> That's right. You are too black and dirty. Bathe after us. Yes. If you bathe first, the water will get dirty. That's right. Bathe after us. All of the birds go into the pond. They start washing their feathers. The crow watches them and talks to himself. Why am I so ugly? Why am I so black? Why am I so dirty? The birds finish bathing and all go home to get ready for the party. The crow watches them leave. Miss Peacock's tail is so beautiful. Mrs. Swan is so graceful. Mr. Crane is so tall. They are all pretty. I wish I weren't a crow. The crow goes into the pond to bathe after them. The water is so dirty. But perhaps if I wash long enough, I will become white. The crow bathes for two hours, but he is still black. I am still black and ugly. Just then, he sees the fallen feathers. The crow comes up with an idea. Look at all these fallen feathers. There are yellow, red, green, 
and blue feathers everywhere. They are beautiful. Aha! I have an idea. I'll cover myself with all these feathers. Then I will be the most beautiful bird. The crow puts on the fallen feathers. He turns into a colorful bird and looks into the pond. I am so beautiful. Everyone will be surprised. No one will know it's me. I can't wait to go to the party. It's nighttime, and all of the birds are gathered at the palace. The crow has not arrived yet. Everyone, be quiet. God is coming down. God comes down the stairs. Are all of the birds here? Yes, all the pretty birds are here. Just then, the crow with the colorful feathers arrives at the party. What is the name of that bird? It is so fashionable. I don't know, God. I have never seen such a bird before. It is very beautiful. Now I have picked the prettiest bird. It's me. <laughs> the prettiest bird is the one with the colorful feathers. Congratulations! Thank you, God. I am so happy. God shakes the crow's hand and puts a big crown on his head. All of the other birds are jealous. They whisper among themselves. Who is that bird? Does anyone know? I have no idea. He must be new here. God asks the crow a few questions. Your feathers are very pretty. Oh, thank you. What is your name? Uh, my name is... The crow hesitates to say his name. Then... A feather falls out. Hey! That is my feather! Look, he has my feather, too. That's my feather over there! He is wearing my feather, too! That's mine! All of the birds gather around the crow and start picking their feathers off the crow. Give us back our feathers at once! Give them back right now! No, no, no! Please, stop! They are mine! Don't take away my feathers! All of the birds pick their feathers off the crow. The colorful crow now turns back into a black crow. Look! It's the crow! My goodness! <gasps> he tricked everyone! The crow is so ashamed and sad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to trick anyone. I just wanted to be pretty like all of you. <laughs> uh. Moral. Don't try to be someone else. Just be yourself. The Frog and the Ox Two frogs are playing near a pond. B! 
big brother, Ribbit, Ribbit, why don't we go home now? Let's stay a little longer, Baby Frog. We should go home. Mother Frog is waiting for us. She told us to come home for lunch. She will be worried. Don't worry, Baby Frog. It's only noon. I want to play a little longer. Come on, Big Brother Frog. Let's go home. Let's play for five more minutes. Just then, a farmer and his ox pass by the pond. The two frogs jump into the pond to hide. They stick their heads out of the water and watch the farmer and the ox pass by. They have never seen such a big animal before. What was that? Ribbit, ribbit. I don't know, but it was very big. Ribbit, ribbit. Yes, it was very big. It was bigger than Mother Frog. So what? Let's go home now. What is the name of that animal? I am curious. I don't know, and I don't care, Big Brother Frog. Let's go now, huh? Mother Frog will be waiting for us. <laughs> No, let's follow the animal. It will be fun. Come on. Oh, okay, but only for a little while. The two frogs follow the ox from behind when suddenly the ox turns around. Baby Frog doesn't see the ox's hoofs. Let's go back to the farm. Moo. Moo. <laughs> Watch out, baby frog! Jump! Quickly! What? Ribbit! Ribbit! Ugh. Baby frog is crushed by the ox. He is dead. Baby frog! Baby frog! There is no answer. Oh my goodness! What shall I do? I must hurry home. I must tell Mother Frog. She will be very sad. Big Brother Frog hops home and tells Mother Frog what has happened. Why are you alone, Big Brother Frog? Where is Baby Frog? Ribbit, ribbit. Don't be too sad, Mother Frog. What do you mean? Where is Baby Frog? Baby Frog is dead, Mother Frog. What? How? Why? A big monster crushed him. Boo-hoo! Boo-hoo! My poor Baby Frog! What did the monster look like? It had horns and a long tail, and it was very, very big. You mean the farmer's ox. How big was it? It was as big as a mountain. An ox isn't that big. It looked really big to me. How big was it again? Bigger than you, Mother Frog. Bigger than me? Are you sure? Yes. The mother frog puffs up her belly. <gasps> Was it this big? No, mother frog. Much bigger. Much bigger? Yes, yes. The mother frog puffs up her belly more than before. How about this? Was it bigger than this? <gasps> oh, much bigger than that. Really? How about this? You are not even close. The ox was much bigger than you. The mother frog again puffs.
puffs up her belly even more. Big Brother Frog keeps shaking his head. <gasps> it can't be bigger than this. Its legs are bigger than that. By this time, Big Brother Frog gets a little worried. Mother Frog's belly is already very swollen. It looks like it is going to burst any minute. Okay, wait just a minute. I'll try to puff myself up one more time. Please don't, Mother Frog. It is too dangerous. No, I'm fine. I can become bigger. The mother frog continues to puff up her belly. Her face is all red. Please stop, mother frog. The ox was much bigger than you. Don't worry. I can become bigger than the ox. Was it this big? <gasps> it was much, much, much bigger. The mother frog takes in more and more air. Her belly is really about to burst. I'll show you. <sighs> the mother frog is swollen like a balloon. Finally, it happens. The mother frog's belly bursts. Pop! <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! Mother frog! Mother frog! Wake up! Wake up! Please! What shall I do? Boo hoo! Moral. Don't try to do the impossible. The Lion and the Mouse It is a peaceful afternoon in the forest. Mr. Lion is very sleepy. What a peaceful afternoon. I am very sleepy. <sighs> I will take a nap now. Mr. Lion falls asleep. Three little mice play near Mr. Lion. Come on, let's play. Okay, what game shall we play? How about hide and seek? Great, Great idea. idea. But who will be it? Let's do rock, paper, scissors. Fine. Fine. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Aha! Mickey, you are it. Okay. I will count to ten. You two hide. Don't count too fast. Let's hide. Jerry look around for a good place to hide. Minnie hides under a leaf, but Jerry can't find a good place. He looks and looks. I can't find a good place. Eight, nine, ten. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Aha! I found you, Minnie. Come out. Oh, no! I better hide right now. Hey, this looks like a good place. It's really soft. Jerry climbs up and hides. But he doesn't know that he is on top of Mr. Lion's head. Where are you, Jerry? Come out! Come out! We can't find you! <laughs> Here I am! Jerry shouts and wakes Mr. Lion. 
Who is this? Who woke me up? A lion! A lion! Jerry, Jerry, run! A, a lion? Jerry looks down and Mr. Lion looks up. Their eyes meet. Oops! Jerry tries to run away, but Mr. Lion stops him. Stop there! Who are you? Uh, I am just a little mouse. You woke me up? It wasn't on purpose. I was just playing. I didn't know. I am very angry. I am going to eat you. I am very sorry, Mr. Lion. Please, forgive me. I don't care. I am still angry. You woke me, so I will eat you. Please wait. Please don't eat me. Why not? I am hungry. Because I am very small, and I taste terrible. Please, let me go, just this once. Perhaps you are right. You are very small. Yes, yes. Let me go, and someday I will help you. Ha <laughs> ha! That is so funny. How can a little mouse help me? I am the king of the forest. I am small, but I am also very smart. I will help you someday. I promise. Okay, okay. Just this once. You can go. But don't wake me up again. Then I will really eat you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lion. You are so kind. I won't forget your kindness. Just leave me alone now. I'm going back to sleep. <sighs> Mr. Lion lets Jerry go and falls back to sleep. A few days later, Jerry is playing with his friends in the forest again. He hears Mr. Lion crying far away. Hey, Mickey, did you hear something? No, I didn't hear anything. How about you, Minnie? I don't know. I think it's Mr. Lion. I think he is hurt. I must help him. Jerry looks around the forest for Mr. Lion. But he can't find him. Where are you, Mr. Lion? Cry out louder. Help! Anyone help? <gasps> there you are. I found you. But why are you in a net? A hunter caught me. He will be back soon. Call a big animal, quickly. Don't worry. I will help you. How can you? You are so small. I will chew up the rope. Just wait. Hurry, before the hunter comes back. Jerry keeps chewing the rope. Little mouse, your teeth must hurt. It's okay. I want to help you. There. The rope is cut. Mr. Lion gets out of the net. Thank you, little mouse. Thank you for your help. <laughs> That's okay. I said I would help you someday. You were right. You may be small, but you are also very smart. Moral, do not judge someone by their size, and kindness is never wasted.
The Fox and the Goat. A thirsty fox looks for water. It's so hot today, and I'm so thirsty. There's no water anywhere. The fox keeps looking. Far away, he sees something. Wait, what's that? I think it's a well. I'm saved. There must be water there. The fox runs towards the well. He is very happy. I was right. There's lots of water here. It looks so cold and delicious. But how can I get the water? The well looks very deep. Oh, what shall I do? The fox thinks and thinks. I can't stand it anymore. I'm too thirsty. I'll just jump in. Here I go. The fox jumps into the well. It's so cool in here. The water tastes so fresh and cold. I can drink it all day. But wait a minute. This well is deeper than I thought. My paws can't reach the top. Oh, my! Now I'm in big trouble. How can I get out? There's no one nearby. There's no one to help me. What have I done? <laughs> the fox is very scared. He can't think of a way to get out of the well. He cries all morning. Then he hears a familiar voice from far away. <laughs> Suddenly, he has a good idea. I'm thirsty and hot. Where is the water? I need a drink right now. The goat sees the same well. He walks towards the well. Aha! There's a well. I found some water. I can have a drink there. Thank goodness. The goat gets closer to the well. He hears a familiar voice. How are you today, goat? What was that? Who said that? I don't see anyone around. Where did the voice come from? The goat keeps looking around, but can't find anyone. This is strange. I heard a voice, but there's no one around. Inside the well? Whose voice was that? The goat looks into the well. Oh my goodness, Fox! What are you doing down there? I was thirsty, so I came down here for a drink. How is the water? Is it fresh and cold? Of course. The water down here is fantastic. It's the best water I've ever tasted. And I'm enjoying it all by myself. Well, um, I'm thirsty too. Can I come down and join you? I just need one drink. Well, let me think about it. Hmm. 
The fox pretends to be thinking about something. Come on, fox. I'm your friend. Let me come down. Well, all right. Just this once. I didn't want to share the water with anyone. But since you are my friend, I'll let you come down. Thanks a lot, Fox. You are too generous. I'm coming down now. The goat also jumps into the well and makes a big splash. Welcome, goat. Fry the water. How is it? Mmm. It is delicious. This is the best water in the world. Thank you for sharing it with me. It's nothing. I'm just glad you like it. But don't you think it's too crowded in here? It was fine when I was alone. Now it's too small. I'm sorry. Should I get out now? No, it's okay. I've had enough water for today. I'll be leaving now. You can drink some more. Thank you, Fox. You are too kind. Keep drinking. I'll just step on your back and climb out now. The fox steps on the goat's back and swiftly gets out of the well. Thank goodness! I'm out! Are you there, fox? I am finished drinking. I want to get out now. Help me up, please. I'm sorry, goat. I can't help you. If I do, I might fall in again. Please help me out. I'm not thirsty anymore, and it's getting dark in here. That's too bad, goat. You should have thought of a way out before. Next time, think before you act, okay? Oh, I'm busy. I must be going. Don't leave me here alone, Fox. I'm afraid. How can I get out by myself? Trick another foolish animal like yourself. Good luck. Goodbye. Moral. Think carefully before you act. The father, his son, and their donkey. A father and his son are going to the market to sell their donkey. On the way, two girls walk behind them. Look there, Susan. How foolish they are. What do you mean? It's a hot day, right? Yes, it's very hot. Well then, why are they walking? They have a donkey. Why don't they ride it? Hey, you're right. They are very foolish. <laughs> the two girls keep laughing. The father hears the two girls. He thinks they are right. He puts his son on the donkey. It's a hot day today, son. You must be tired. Get on the donkey. Ride it to the market. Thank you, father. But how about you? I'm fine, son. Don't worry about me. 
Let's just hurry. We'll be late. The father and the son go only a few meters. They pass by a group of old men who are resting under the shade. Everyone, look there. The father is walking, and the son is riding on the donkey. What an ungrateful son. Young people these days, they don't respect the elderly. Poor man. Look at him sweat. He looks tired. Why is the son riding the donkey? He is young. He should walk. He must be a bad son. The father hears the old men. He thinks they are right. He tells his son to get off the donkey. Get off, son. It's my turn. I'll ride the donkey now. Yes, father. You must be tired. Let's go, son. Now the father is riding the donkey. Then a mother with her child sees them. What a terrible father! He rides the donkey and his little son walks. The poor boy looks tired. He is also sweating. <laughs> the man must be a bad father. <laughs> the father hears this. He thinks she is right. He tells his son to climb up on the donkey with him. Son, come up here with me. You must be tired too. Let's ride the donkey together. That's okay, father. I don't mind walking. Just get on, son. People will think I am a bad father. Okay, father, if you insist. The son gets on the donkey behind his father. Come on, donkey. Giddy up, giddy up. Let's go faster. We are late. The two pass by a field. A farmer sees them. Look at that poor donkey. It looks so pale. How selfish those two are. They have strong legs. Why don't they just walk? They should be ashamed. He is right, son. The donkey does look pale. We were too selfish. Let's carry the donkey from here, son. The father and son tie the donkey's legs to a pole and carry it together on their shoulders. Let's cross that bridge quickly. The market is right across the river, son. Yes, father. But this donkey is getting heavy, and I am getting tired. As they cross the bridge, people on the other side of the bridge see the father, the son, and the donkey. They start laughing. Look over there. Why are they carrying the donkey? Who knows? But it looks silly. You're right. It really does look silly. <laughs> <laughs> the donkey gets frightened by their loud laughter. The donkey tries to free himself. <laughs> Stay still, donkey. We are almost there. I can't hold on any longer, father. The donkey is too strong. Just then, <coughs> the donkey falls into the water. Oh, no. He fell in. Jump in and get him, son. But, father, the water is too deep, and I can't swim. Look, look. It's drifting away. Poor donkey. What are we going to sell now, father?
moral. You can't please everyone. <laughs>